Yeah. Ooh, he's a wonderful guy. I have a handout tonight, Brother Keaton. Are you all better? Are you all Keep an eye on you. Yes. You know me, I'm a list person. And so I'm always saying number one, two, three, four, five. So I go ahead and I clear them out. <laughs> so you have a list of what we're going to be possibly, hopefully, finishing up tonight. So we all know we've been talking about change and how we feel or we want or it's going to be 2015 is going to be a year of change. And if you remember, last week we ended and we were talking about dysfunctional thinking. And we went through several bullet points. And I just want to bring up my last dysfunctional thinking idea or thought, whatever it is, I don't know. And move into how we can change those things. So my last thought as far as dysfunction goes, and a lot of us have a problem with it. I eat meat, or namely me. And that thought is, we can continue to do the same thing, we can continue to think the same way, but yet we expect different results. You know that, we all talk about that, that's insanity. And so I began to, I began to assess myself in 2014, and I went back over my goals again. And I didn't accomplish three quarter of those, wait, seven-eighths of those goals I did not accomplish. And so I told myself, something's got to change in 2015. So it starts with my mind. If I can get my mind to change, my body will change. Because where the mind goes, the body will follow. And so I began to think about some things. I said, Lord, I want better health, and I want to lose some weight. So Lord, I have to be willing to cut back into exercise. Lord, I want more peace and less drama in my life. So guess what? I have to be willing to cut some more people off. I said, Lord, I want some more money in the bank. So I'm going to have to quit spending so much. Which I didn't realize was going to be so difficult. The last week, it's been painful. But that's okay. I said, Lord, I want a closer walk with you. So that means I'm going to have to... Read a little more, pray a little more, fast a whole lot more, wait, read a lot more, pray some more, spend some more time with you. I'm going to have to get to know you a little better. So I begin to write all these things down for myself. And if we can start with the list, the first thing is we have to live with purpose on purpose. And I administered this a long time ago, and we're going to go to the book of Matthew just for a second. Mother, Matthew chapter 5. Starting at verse 13, Mother, through 16. Can you help me to 
clarify my purpose. And so today I'm going to ask you just a few questions, just to ponder. Hey, do you really consider what your purpose is? Do you know why God created you? And are you living up to the expectations of God's purpose for you? And so I began to say, I said, Lord, help me with clarification. And I was watching T.D. Jakes today, and he was talking about destiny. And what he began to say was, if we could imagine that we are metal, and we pull back all the layers of us, and we get to our inner core, he said he believes that there's been something pulling at him or tugging at him for years. There's this outside thing pulling him a separate, a different direction than what the world is going, and it keeps on pulling and tugging and tugging at him. And what he said that thing was, was God. Mm -hmm. It was destiny. And he began to say how God is the magnet and how we are a piece of metal. And if we begin to open ourselves up and we begin to invest in God's word and read it, the more we open ourselves, the more magnetic attraction there is. And God begins to pull us and we begin to figure out what our purpose in life is. And so I begin to say, Lord, what is mine? I said, but what makes me the happiest? What makes me feel the most fulfilled? And that is where our purpose really lies. For me, it's honestly talking about God's word. I'm in a better spiritual condition when I know I'm teaching Sunday school and when I know I'm teaching Bible class. You know why? Because I'm reading my word. I'm studying. I'm praying. I'm, I'm researching. When I know I have a responsibility and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I feel the most fulfilled. Right. Being a mom makes me feel great. I'm the one who never wanted a kid. But I love being a mommy. It makes me happy. I love being a wife. All that is tied to my purpose. I love being a protector. I love helping people. And when I'm walking in my purpose, I'm at my best. When I'm living on purpose for God, I'm the most calm. I'm the most peaceful. I'm the best Kelly that I can be at that particular moment. I'm going to continue to get better. The more I open myself up, the more I yield toward God, the more attraction there is, and the more I want to please Him. Right. So it becomes not about what Kelly wants to do, but what God wants Kelly to do. Because I was talking to Brother Gary today, and I said, you know what, sometimes I don't want to. I get all nervous. I get flustered. It's easier just to be nobody. I'm telling the truth. But it's not what God has called me to do. I can do that and maybe still make heaven my home, but I'm not going to feel that fulfillment and that happiness in my life. And that's where I want to get. Research shows this. Before people are willing to act, they have to be motivated. And that's one of our biggest problems. We're not motivated as the people of God. So we're going to talk about motivation just for one moment. i got a question for you. How many of us, if we go to bed and we forget to brush our teeth, and we make, wake up in the middle of the night and we say, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth. How many of us get up and go brush our teeth? No. <laughs> but most of us like to brush our teeth before we go to bed. Right. Correct? Mm -hmm. But if we wake up at 3 or 4, we're not getting out of bed to go brush our teeth, are we? Right. How many of people at 3 o'clock in the morning when the alarm goes off in your house and you smell smoke, how many of us get up and run? Or get up and check on it. Amen. Why is that? Fear. It's more of an emergency. Fear. Danger. We're more motivated to get up when we hear that alarm. Correct? Right. It's the same way with us and our motivation with God. Right now, we may not be hearing the alarm, but we're here sounding the alarm tonight. Because when we don't brush our teeth and take care of our teeth, how many people know somebody with a yuck mouth? 
Be honest. I mean, the thing is, we don't brush our teeth, we don't floss, we don't do those things. You may not see the effects today, but tomorrow and tomorrow, more buildup, more plaque, more gaps, more gingivitis, more cavities, more feelings, more funky breath. Isn't that the truth? Because we're not motivated because we don't see we don't see a direct or immediate consequences. Right. Yeah. We don't what? We don't see that as life or death. Like we don't see it as life or death. But isn't this walk life or death? But you know what? I'm not worried about the death anymore because I feel like my death, I'm confident of where I'm going, but guess what? I still want the abundant life on this side. I want the more peace, the happiness. I want it. I want my cake and I want to eat it too. And why can't I have it as a child of God? I believe I can. And in 2015, I so desire to have it. Amen. Lack of motivation is a major reason why we're not pleasing God in 2015. Lack of motivation. So I begin to assess myself and I'm going to put me on the chopping block because this is very, very true. I'm going to say lack of motivation, one of our biggest problems is because we're selfish. I've talked about this before. Spiritually and naturally, we're selfish. You all ready for this? I got a natural example. Me and my diabetes. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt and Sister Sharice can talk about this with me, that if I'm not very careful with my blood sugar, eventually I can have eye problems and go blind. I can have nerve damage where my feet go numb and I might have to have amputation. I know people have had their toes cut off, their feet, their legs cut off. True. Heart condition. I know all these things about diabetes. But yet, Sister Kelly has not done consistently what she needs to do. Why? Hard-headed. Hard-headed, stubborn, and I'm selfish because have I considered the fact that, number one, what I do to my body, it does influence my family. Right. I have a 14-year-old, and what I do affects my ministry also. How can I get up and testify if I don't have legs? Love us a lot, don't you? 
Uh, yeah. Pastor Ash, can you come stand where this chair is, please? <laughs> now, I want Pastor Ash to take the same beating. Yes, are we Lord. okay with that? No. No, we are not. I'm really not. <laughs> no, we're not. No. Now, Keith, I want you to hit it as hard as you can. I mean, please don't. Don't do that. Please don't. Don't do that. You can't? Please don't. No. Why not? No. That's my best. I'm close to my best. Huh? I'm my best. You do? Are you sure you can't do just one good time? Guess what? He didn't ask that of us anyways. Go sit down. He, he took it all so we didn't have to take it. Thank you, Jesus. He took it all so we didn't have to take it. Tell me that's not love. Hallelujah. That's very simple, isn't it? That is so simple, but he took it all, so you didn't have to take any of that. Chris said I would have done it. <laughs> it was Pastor Ash's belt that was broke. Yeah. It was already broke. <laughs> so I want to talk about motivation with real talk, just for one minute. And I want to get real talk, okay? Motivation to help us to change, okay? Yeah. I'm about to use some real life examples. Do you realize, do you really realize with God we can have, and I'm going to appeal to some of you people, because I this appeals to me. With God, you can have more money. Amen. With God, you can have more peace. Oh, yeah. With God, you can have more happiness. With God, you can have greater relationships. And with God, you have heaven. Now, Mother, I want you to go somewhere and get ready for me. Revelations chapter 21. But in the meantime, let me give you an example about money. This is real talk. This should be real motivation. I received the Holy Ghost in 1996. Okay? I'm an average person, average IQ. Now, and I understand cost of living and all that good stuff, but right now I make four times the amount of money that I did way back then. Brother Chris makes 3.6 times the amount of money he did back then. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Sharice right now is an RN. She makes good money. Good money yeah. Sister Sharice is average, okay? But she has learned with God, she can go from that CNA to that LPN and she can get that RN. If she so choose to, she could probably be a doctor. She just doesn't choose to right now. But with God, look how advancements with money. I would guess Brother Dodson, mm -hmm. I bet you he's not making the same thing as when he first started working with the Lord. True? You're making this a little bit more, Brother Dodson? There's something these people have in common. Faithfulness to God, though. Their faithfulness and their dollars have increased. There's been times in Sister Jan's life that she's made more money than she probably thought she would make. Because you know why? Serving God. God opened doors, made work ways for her. She was working for the Colts. She was getting cars bought for her. <laughs> Money means nothing to God. Nothing at all. But serving God, it pays. Spiritually and naturally. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you, Lord. I got an example of real life example of peace and happiness. I used to be a very paranoid thinker. If I saw you talking and like laughing with each other, I automatically thought you were talking about me. Right. Sister Sharice, give me an amen. Amen. Okay? I used to be stressed out all the time. I used to sweat underneath my arms real bad so my shirts would get funky and I'd have to throw them away. Mm. Real talk. I used to be nervous when people came to my home. Now, with God, with the transformation, Amen. my shirts aren't funky anymore. Jesus. They're lasting much longer. <laughs> well, I'm just being true. Yeah. Now I can see people laugh. It's not that you're talking about me. I can laugh with them. Right. That's good. With God. With God. Because if I take God out of the equation, I still have those crazy thoughts. And now God has taught me how to change my thinking that they're not talking about you, that you're not that important, Kelly. Maybe they're discussing their lunch. 
<laughs> With God, I can have better relationships. I used to think I had friends. Now I know I have friends. There are certain people in my life I can call on 24-7 and I know they'll be there. You know why? Because they love God more than they love me. If they love God more, they're going to take care of what God wants them to take care of. And it just so happens that might be Sister Kelly because they're one of their friends. <laughs> I got your back. That's what I'm talking about. Brother Chris got my back. My life hasn't always been like that. But when you surround yourself with people that love God and want to please God, you have benefits in your relationships. Yes. Here's some real talk. Mother Frankie. I'm going to start with this. Um, St. John 14, 2 and 4 says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it not so, I would have told you I'd go to prepare a place for you. Now, Mother Frankie's going to read just a little bit of John describing what he saw because this is a benefit that you will have mm -hmm. in heaven. Okay. One through 27. And, Mother, you know what? You can, um, whatever catches your goat in there about heaven, you want to read, you can skim goat. But, you know, just let me hear what you got. No, you're in Revelation. I'm sorry. Revelation 21. Okay. 1 through 27. All right. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. You said I can what? You can skip down a couple if you want, but start to give me some description of what heaven's going to be like. Elaborate. I saw a new heaven. It does, to me, that doesn't mean that this world, this present world is going to pass away, but it's going to be purified. It's going to come back. Mm. Even continue to read down, Mother, because he's going to describe it for us and all the jewels and the, la and the layers and... Okay. okay, I'm sorry. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with you, and he will dwell with them, mm -hmm. and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. Yes. And be their God. Hallelujah. And God shall wipe away yeah. all tears uh -huh. from their eyes. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And there shall be no more death, mm -hmm. nor neither light, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain from the former things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep on going. Mm -hmm. Keep on going, Mother. And, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Oh. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are the, are the true and faithful. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, mm -hmm. the murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is, it, which is the second death, mm -hmm. the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and if we keep on going down and keep on going down, mm -hmm. he begins to describe what it looks like. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at gates were twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes. And it keeps on going on, and keeps on going on, and it begins to give you the size, and the length, and the depth, and it begins to, the first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third, the third, 
Chalcedony, whatever that is, then emerald, then sardox, or so topaz, and it begins to tell you then pearls and how the streets are gold and they're translucent. It begins to describe all those things that are being prepared for us as we make ourselves ready. So not only is God saying, hey, you can have all these natural benefits right now if I am truly the God of your life, but you know what? Not only on top of that, I'm going to give you eternal life, but while you're having eternal life, I'm going to give you all of this yes. to have. Thank you, Lord. As if he's not enough. It says there are no lights there, that he is the light. That's right, that's right. I mean, it's just amazing to me just to realize and to think about when I'm down depressed, when I'm fresh, I begin to think about, Lord, but you're preparing a place for me. I wonder, is that all the streets already made? I don't know. I wonder if the gold has been bucked, if their angels are there shining it right now for us. So when we walk, we can see ourselves. I don't know. Hallelujah. But I want to find out. Yes, ma'am. I believe that the mansion is already there because he said, oh, no uh, mansions. Uh, they lost, I lost my train. Mansions. You know what I'm the script, Pastor Weston's scripture, he talks about the mansions are already made. They're already prepared. It's already there. Uh -huh. ah, 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 so we're just waiting. That's right. Woo. So we have to get some motivation to do things a little differently while we're waiting. Do you realize that we desire to be like someone that we admire? So someone that's of important to us, do you know we want to be like them? Brother Chris, roll that video for me, would you? Young people, this is so true of I want to be like Mike in sports figures. Oh, I guess you're ready to fly. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> you ready to get up at 5 a.m.? And you ready for a gross breakfast? And you ready for epic theme music? And you ready to run in an abandoned part of town? And you ready to run for your shot in a dramatic you lit gym? And you ready for a contact drill scene? And you ready to be told you're not ready? Yo, son, why you be like Mike? And retire. And you ready for the cliche tire flipping scene? Oh, you ready for this? Oh, and some of these? Don't do that. <laughs> and you ready to exercise in an unnecessarily hot room? Can I just go back to the dramatic gym? Yeah. You ready for a close up with sweat dripping off your nose? Yeah. Ready for this? <laughs> this kid wants to be like Mike. Or I'm sorry, who's that guy, Westcott? Who's that? Westbrook. Westbrook. Sorry, Gary, who's that? Russell Westbrook. Thank you. The kid wants to be like him. But he's saying, are you willing to put in the hard work right. to be like me? Come on. So the truth of the matter is, when it comes to motivation, we can find some motivation if we admire someone. Do we admire Christ and what he did for us? I began to think about different people in this congregation. I said, Lord, there are certain things I admire about certain people in here. I began to think about Mother Frankie, just to be honest with you. And I said, the woman always wants to help someone, even if she's the one that needs help. Amen. That's part of her purpose, though. It brings her fulfillment when she's helping someone. Right. I begin to say, um... Lord, I admire Brother Dotson's faith. I just don't have it like that, but I so desire yeah. to have it like that. So God is so awesome that he would plant him here for sure. this space of time sure. just to help me with my faith issue. Sure. See how wonderful God is? I begin to say, Lord, but Sister Jane is known for her love thing, and if I can just admire her, then I desire to have that same amount of love. And Brother Chris, when he makes up his mind, he just does it. Gets on my nerves. It's that easy for him. I'm going to change this. Boop, he changes it. Sister Sharice has got some tenacity to her. She's got some 
fight to her. I begin to think about Sister Esther. No matter what the day has been, girl always looks good. I admire those things. I begin to think of every one of this congregation. And the truth of the matter is, I thought about each one of you guys, and I can tell you what I admire in you. Because I see a quality of Christ that I want. Amen. Because God has planted me here, and I admire you, I'm more motivated to be like you. Christ is still an example, but it just so happens that you have that part of Christ being manifest in you that I happen to see. So, the old adage we used to say all the time, WWJV, what would Jesus do? We've gotten away from that. So maybe if we can get back to asking ourselves in every situation, what would he do? Maybe we could act like that. Or we should say, what would he think about this? And if we think the same way, then that would come out. Amen. Number two, we're not going to talk about this very long because we all know this. Believing you can change with God's help. Uh -huh. so we already know the scriptures. We just have to rehearse them so we become who we are. Philippians 4 and 13 says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. So perhaps we failed and we need to ask ourselves, what has happened? Was I not, was I using my strength and not your strength? Right. Is it self-fulfilling prophecy? Here's one thing that gets me. We continue to say, I can't do it. I can't, I can't. The truth of the matter is, we're calling God's word a lie. Amen. Because we can do it. If it's God's will for us, sure. we can do it. Psalms 37 5 says, if you commit yourself to the Lord and trust him, he will accomplish his will for you. 1 Corinthians 10 13 says, God will not allow temptation that are beyond your ability to bear. So God has given us everything we need if we will just believe that we have access to it. Amen. We all know that. Correct? Amen. We just have to use it. Step number three, this is one of my favorite steps right here, and this has been challenging me all week long. You see me, I'm bleeding, but that's okay. Study your Bible about your habit. If you want to overcome a bad habit or a sin or a fault, study your Bible about that fault or that sin or that habit. Joshua says it like this. King James says in Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. What does that mean, Sister Kelly? New Living Translation says this. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Right. Only then will you prosper and exceed in all you do. That's book. So guess what my bad habit that I decided to study on. I'm going to give you all some fire scriptures on Sister Kelly's bad habit. Self-control. Temperance is one of my big problems. Yeah. I'm probably not the only one. Because my food habit is on my last nerve and I have to overcome 2 Peter 1 and 6 says this, And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we all know the fruits of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit, and the last one says self-control or temperance. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lord, if I have you, then I have your fruit. So what is the problem? Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem with patience, with love, with patience, with self-control, if you have God, you have the fruit, what's the problem? Now this is how I talk to Sister Kelly. What's your problem, girl? Right. You have the tool. Just cooperate and use it. So I've been beating myself up and saying, you have the tool. So every time I have a desire, at 8 o'clock at night to eat something that I don't need because it's not benefiting me, I tell myself, you don't have to do that. You have God. Don't do that, Sister Kelly. I talk to myself. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I tell me no. 2 Peter 1, 
5 through 9, says this. Well, we'll start at 3. New Living Translation says, As we know Jesus better, His divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. He has called us to receive His own glory and goodness. And by the same mighty power, He has given us all His rich and wonderful promises. He has promised that you will escape the decadence all around you caused by evil desires and that will share in his divine nature. Number six says, knowing God leads to self-control. Knowing God leads to self-control. So the more I know you, God, the more self-control I should have or the more self-control I should be able to exhibit or display. But Lord, do I not know you? Oh, I begin to ask myself those questions. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple, the Holy Ghost, which is in you? 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So in other words, if I have a problem, and my habit just happens to be food that I'm talking about right now, when I do it in excess, I'm not giving God glory, I'm giving my belly glory. I'm so, I have to talk to me like that. So whatever your problem is, or whatever your bad habit is that you're trying to overcome, you need to pull the scriptures out. You need to study the scriptures. And every time that things comes up, if you study your scriptures long enough, those scriptures will begin to come to you. And when you feel the temptation, something will come that will help you overcome. That something is God's word. It will come. So I begin to study a lot of scriptures on self-control. Oh, for some of us, on consistency, oh, there's a lot in this book on consistency. And so when I feel myself not wanting to do right or not be consistent, you know what? God's word begins to come back to my mind. Time out, Sister Kelly, for excuses. That's why I tell me. Time out, girl. You have power. You have God. You have temperance. Use it. That's what I tell me. It's a fight every day. Pastor Ash. 2017, this is it right here. God ain't going to let me go one more year. If I do, I don't know if I'm a beer to make. Mm -hmm. Thank God for 2018, day, day of new beginnings. It's the eight. Yep. 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 You know what the difference is, Pastor Ash? Can I tell you the difference is in 2015? Mm -hmm. It's number four. Okay. I'm making a plan of action, Pastor Amen. Ash. Amen. I have a plan. And I have people in my corner to help me make sure the plan comes to pass. Amen. And so I brought my plan of action tonight so we can talk about a little bit. And I begin to think about this. I said, Lord, what if we were going to build a house? Because we do things and we don't have a plan. Isn't that correct? Right. I said, Lord, help me to consider. If we're going to build a house, what do we need to consider? We need, we need money. Amen. And how much can I afford? Right. We need to find out about the interest rates. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk about our monthly payments and our taxes and insurance. We need to talk about, Lord, what about the space? Where's the land at? Am I going to build or am I going to buy something that's already existing? Right. If I'm going to build, Lord, I need some permits. I need a designer. I need an architect. Amen. I need contractors. I need plumbers, I need electricians, I need drywallers, I need finishers. I need to consider the resale value. I need to consider that I have to move into the place. And then most of all, can I really afford it at the end? Amen. So if we want to do something, we have to have a plan for it. Correct? Amen. Worthwhile activities to be successful need planning. True. Listen to this, I read this on the internet. Many people fail to change to please God because they never plan to succeed. They did not plan to fail, but they failed to plan. We're in trouble a lot because we do not plan. So we have to have a plan of action in 2015. 
Now us young people, Sunday school class, we made ourselves little notebooks. And we're journaling. And we're supposed to be journaling. And if we're not journaling, that's fine. Sister Kelly will have some goals met 2015. And I'll be looking at y'all like you crazy at the end of the year. So we're telling ourselves, look, we have goals and I can do this. Oh, I, I, I got them down. I got them down. First of all, I have to encourage myself every single day. Right. I have God's promises right here. I get discouraged. I can read them. I got my scriptures. I'm ready. You want to combat me, devil? Come on, baby, because I got God's word to help me right here. Amen. I have my goals. We talked about this in Sunday school. What's my spiritual goals? I have a prayer list. I have family goals. I have financial goals. I have physical goals. I have goals for my home. And what's so cool is every single time I hit one, I mark it off. Then, after that, because I have financial goals, and y'all know I have a problem with food, Sister Kelly has her grocery list and my menu items for the week, every single week. Because I follow what's on my list now. So y'all want to know what we're having for dinner this week at the Vernon's? Just come ask to look for my journal, because it's in here. <laughs> because if I don't do this, if I don't plan, I fail. Right. So this is what it takes for me. And then I've just been journaling some things. My feelings. I've had two revelations this week. And I would love to share them with you guys. Revelation number one was, I share too much with too many people. Amen. I'm just being, something happened. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I do. I'm not saying. But I got the revelation. Shut your mouth. You can't share everything with everyone. Amen. And then my other revelation I got was, Ooh, spending is hard. Or not spending is hard. <laughs> because I have goals. I'm excited. There are certain things that I want to accomplish this year. And so I have a plan of action in place. Right. If I don't have a plan, I will fail. You want to know how I know? Y'all want to talk about 2014? Remember those seven, eight goals I didn't accomplish? I didn't plan. And so if I hear something or somebody says something that encourages me, I write it down. Guess what? I can go back and read it. Yeah. T.D. Jakes is talking about destiny. Man is on fire, blessing my soul. And so guess what? I wrote down some things. Yeah. He began to talk about how we're so loyal to certain things. I began to say, Lord, but I'm so loyal to the bad habits. Yeah. And so I don't want to be loyal to those. I want to be radical in 2015. I want to walk around every single day and I want to read my book. <laughs> because if I read my book, I'm going to be accountable for it. So whatever it takes for you, but you have to have a plan. If you fail to plan, if you, if you fail to plan, you will fail. Amen. Period. Got to have a plan. So whatever your habit is that you want to change, whatever area of your life that is sin that you want to change, whatever area of your life is not pleasing to God, or just whatever you want to see yourself accomplish, right. get a plan to accomplish it. All right. And watch it come to pass. Yes. You need a practical checklist of steps you're going to change. You need to analyze the circumstances or causes that have led you to fail in the past. Then you need to say, well, what am I going to do to not have that same failure? Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to write it down. You have to read it. You have to continually modify it. And it has to be something measurable. All the young people tell me I want a better attitude in 2015. I said, what does that mean? You want a better attitude. Give me an example. I mean, do you go off ten times a week? Great. Let's try for five times this week. Right. Well, I don't want to cuss. Great. Let's not cuss this week and see what happens. What does a bad attitude mean? We have to know what we're trying to change in order to change it. True. Step five says pray, pray regularly. We know that. God has promised that if you ask his help, he will hear and he will answer. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting your cares upon him, for he cares. 
Ephesians 6 and 18 talks about praying always with all prayer and supplication. I begin to remind myself, you know what, doesn't a child get so much more from his father by saying please and thank you? What's wrong with us sometimes going to God and not honoring him? Thank you, Lord, thank you. Yes. I'll even say, Lord, please, please, Lord, help my mind. Please, please, Lord. Please give them some more grace, Lord. Yeah. Pastor Ash. Can I just add to that prayer? Yeah, please, please. Sometimes don't give up on your prayer so quick. Amen. Also, um, I mean, sometimes you might pray five minutes and that's all you need it. You know, sometimes you may have to pray 60. Sometimes you might plan to pray 60 minutes and it don't seem like God coming through until about after 50. You know, that's kind of what happened last night. Mm -hmm. It was probably about 7.50, 7.55. And you just felt the pray. You just felt the breaking. I mean, after, you know, basically almost an hour worth of toil. I mean, in a sense, I mean, you're praying. You just, I mean, you just, you're going through the motion. You, you know it's right, but you, you got some petitions. But you really didn't almost feel God's favor, if I can say it like that, to simplify it, just break forward. And probably about, I mean, it was like, okay, Lord, you did it again, huh? You'd be nice to come in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, but sometimes we just give up too quick on our prayer. I just want to add that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we say this in the natural, anything as good is worth fighting for. Well, how come anything that's worthwhile is not praying for? Amen. I mean, if we could carry that over. And so one of the things I really, really try to remember, and I have a prayer list here that I like to take down with me in prayer. Because if I forget, I'm like, Lord, but I, I really have a desire to see you do this. I mean, one of the things that I, on my prayer list is Sister Sharice getting her job. Amen. I want to see that come to pass. So I want to continue to ask God on her behalf. Now, she's praying, and she might not need me to pray, but guess what? I'm going to add some. I'm going to add some salt to that. I'm going to add some more flair. I'm going to bring something to the table. Lord, do it for her. So you guys, I have different things about you right. on my list. And I ask God, Lord, give me strength, give me diligence, give me commitment, give me tenacity, give me strength. Help me, Lord, to stay at this thing. Because I do not want 2015 to end like 2014 ended. I can't. Amen. I can't. I won't. All right. Step number six. Seek help from other Christians. But what I put on my paper is other like-minded people. Like-minded people of Christ, not like-minded people of yourself. Right. So I ask myself these questions, or because Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, to da 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 So I begin to say, Lord, if I need help with my marriage, why am I going to a single person? If I need help with my finances, why am I going to someone in foreclosure? If I need help fixing my car, why am I going to a roofing company? Right. If I need spiritual help, go to God. Amen. And then go to Pastor Ash and book him. <laughs> and say, you know, God is not talking loud enough right now. I need some, I need some help. Why do we go to the ungodly? We go to the ungodly because they're going to co-sign our mess. Amen. But see, we're changing our minds, so we don't even have the minds of the ungodly. But we have to go to people that have a proven track record. Amen. So if I need help with certain things, I'm going to look around and see who God has planted me around, and I'm going to ask them for help. If I need help in my house, I'm going to Brother Chris or Pastor Ash. If I need something heavy move, I'm going to Big Man Keith. Big Man. <laughs> who's pushed out 5,000 push ups. That's right. Push it. 5,000 something. I'm just saying, God plans us for a reason with people in our lives. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, it says this And God has set some in the church, first apostles, Secondarily, prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles and gifts and healings, helps, government. God puts those things for us or those people in our lives for a specific reason. If I want to talk to someone and I need a mother, I call Mother Frankie. Oh, 
old darling. I can always get an old darling from Mother Frankie. I'm, I'm serious. Amen. Is that good truth? So why are we consulting people that we should not be consulting? Well, Stop it. Yeah. It's that simple. Consult those people that have like-minded minds of Christ and not your own until it's transformed. Amen. And if he's renewing our minds every day, if we want it renewed. Mm -hmm. Number seven. Diligently practice what is right. All good attitudes and intentions are great, but they will not get the job done. True. Proverbs 21 and 5 says this, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Proverbs 12 and 14 says, Wise words bring many benefits, and hard work brings reward. Proverbs 14 and 23 says, Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Uh, 14 and 23. I'm sorry. That's okay. Diligently practice what is right. I told Pastor Ash this. This is something that Pastor Force, when he was here, he tried to teach us so hard. And I'm so grateful because this is one thing I really picked up on. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. He told us to practice right. Told us to get in the slow lane. He would give us examples. And you know what? I begin to practice right. And even today... I can say the right thing, be in the right place, and the truth of the matter is, oh, I'm not feeling it, but I can practice right. And then I pray, God, change my heart. Right. So my heart right. follows what I just said. Amen. Is it hypocritical? No way. I'm practicing what's right. And you know, eventually you practice what's right long enough, yeah. it becomes a habit, it becomes in your mind, it becomes who you are. That's right. So even if I'm not feeling it, I can say what's right. And I do it intentionally. And then I just ask God, Lord, let my heart follow. And he will do it. I'm a witness. Substitute good habits and good thinking for bad ones. We have to replace our bad thoughts with good thoughts. We have to replace our bad behavior with good behavior. Replace and substitute. Do not leave empty. What is left empty will be filled with something new. I, I did some research on this. Because everybody says 21 days. If you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. You don't want the good news or the bad news? You want the what? The bad news? That's a lie. You want the good news? It could be shorter for you, but it could be up to 254 days for you. It could be longer, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, that's a myth. Here's the truth of the matter. Ask God to change your mind and practice it. And practice it. And practice it some more and do the right thing. And before you know it, it could be 10 days, 20 days. It could be 365 days. That practice has now become habit. Yeah. It's become a part of who you are. Pastor, Pastor Forrest used to say, you know what? I wanted to think myself happy for so long that I learned how to just become happy. Right. So he said he would, y'all remember this? He would skip. <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember that. Y'all remember that? Amen. And that would make him happy. Mm. So guess what? If he was having a problem with being happy, he had a tool. He knew what he could do. So he practiced skipping right. so he could be happy. Yeah. Some of us need to get some tools. Some of us need to start practicing. Amen. We need to practice. We need to be more diligent. We have to substitute the right for the wrong. If we leave it empty, it will fill up with something. That's true. So fill it up with the right. Number nine, avoid temptation. Nobody wants to hear this, 
is because Sister Kelly moans and groans about changing people, places, and things. If you want to avoid the temptation, you have to change the people, places, and things. It's a fact. Ask any drug abusing person. Ask any. Hey, you're a recovering person. Can you go back to where you used to buy from? No. Can you associate with those old buddies? No. They had to change some things in order to stay clean. Right. Well, we have to change some things in order to stay clean, too. Right. Contamination is all around us, but we don't have to go be a part of that contamination. Right. We continue to put ourselves in those places, and then we wonder why we act certain ways. Quit wondering, know why. You caused it. So if you haven't assessed, it's just the truth, isn't it? If you haven't assessed what has led to failure, now's the time to do so. Right. So we need to sit there and think, Lord, what is it that I need to change in 2015? Is it my attitude? Is it my self-control? Is it, Lord, that I don't have a Holy Ghost and I need the Holy Ghost? What is it that you need to change in 2015 to be more pleasing to God? And you have a more prosperous life. Right. You know what, Bill? I'm, I'm sorry. You know what, Sister Kelly? Yes, ma'am. This is something I, that Lamar has explained to me because when we got married, I knew a lot of his God plans that were single. Okay. And I didn't want it to make it feel like when he got married, he couldn't hang out with his boys no more. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, babe, it's not that. He said, you hang around like minded people. Mm -hmm. He said, so. I don't mind if Greg and Elgin and come over to the house, mm -hmm. but us hanging out at Applebee's, whatever, he said, I'm not doing that anymore because, not that he's fearing okay. cheating on me or okay. anything, but, you know, if you hang out with guys, they're single guys, and a girl starts talking to one of the guys, and she's with her friend, they're going to start talking, you're just in a situation that, does that make sense? Yeah. You preach it, go ahead. So go ahead. I was like, well, I didn't, because I, mean, I didn't want to make him feel like, oh, you're married now, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But then how he explained it to me, because now he hangs out with married guys. You know, married guys who love their wives, too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I didn't understand that at first, <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. You know, like you said, Greg, and they come up to the house. But as far as hanging out with them to watch, you know, fire or something, he said he doesn't, he's not doing that anymore. It's not the temptation, but it's like you said, going back to even number six, is that like minded people. And that's who you need to surround yourself with. Can we take an offer? <laughs> For real. I mean, as we transition in life, our thinking has to transition. I mean, we. Yeah, that just amazes me. We have to transition. We have to change. We don't pee and poop in diapers anymore. Really? Wouldn't y'all be embarrassed if I walked in here with a diaper on? Nope. I mean, and then I used it? Mm -hmm. In your state right now, yeah, there's a problem. That is a problem. But for, for some people, I would say Lamar had a problem if he was going to the club with his single friends. Because in my mind, that's a problem. He's married, and he has you. Why would he do that? Just the same way you would say it was a problem if I had a diaper on. We have to transition. We have to grow. We have to learn. We have to move forward and progress in God and in our thinking. I've learned certain things over the last couple weeks. I have to have a grocery list. It's a necessity for me. It's small, it's minor, but it works for me. I've learned I have to eat before I go to the grocery store. Because if I don't, snacks galore end up in my cart. Healthy snacks and unhealthy snacks. I'm hungry. And so more things go into my cart. I've learned I have to take my lunch. Because even if I plan to go to Subway or I plan to eat some fruit, I still end up at Wendy's or Arby's or a Philly cheese steak with Sister Cherise. <laughs> that was a treat, sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I don't plan, I fail. I cannot be the only one here that if you don't plan, you fail. Yeah. We have to plan for success. Sure. Plan for success in our finances. 
marriages, plan for success in our marriage, plan for success in our relationships with people, plan for success in our relationship with God. Amen. We have to plan that. We have to plan. I know this pastor, Ashley, Sister Jean, they have a planned date night that's Friday night. Because if they don't plan for it, things will happen. Amen. Pastor Ashley will get called away, Jan will get called away, and then they won't have a date night at all. They plan for that. You know why? Because they want to keep their marriage healthy. They want to keep that fire going. Amen. They want to be able to talk and communicate with each other. That's important to them. So they plan for it. That's right. We have to plan for those things that are important to us. And our relationship with God should be one of those things that are the most important thing to us. Yes. Number 10 is the last. Oh, I'm sorry. 10, be patient. We have to be patient with ourselves. <laughs> Small incremental changes. I would love to say, and this would be beautiful, Lord, heal my mind so I never have a crazy thought. And I pray that all the time. I just haven't received that healing yet. Or that deliverance. <laughs> but I pray for it. Y'all see me. I'm, Lord, in the name of Jesus, take this mind. And I'm serious. Every single time. Lord, help this mind. And he helps it. But guess what? I have to pray that all the time. I'm asking for deliverance. I'm asking for this mind to never have crazy thoughts. It hasn't happened yet. So guess what? I'll keep on. And I'll keep on being patient. And I'll keep on practicing my scriptures. And one day at a time, I will overcome. I shall overcome. I am overcoming. Number 11, this is my last one. Celebrate success. Chris is celebrating right now something, I don't know what. Success. <laughs> when you make small changes, celebrate. Amen. I tell myself all the time, you're doing pretty good, girl. You came from a crazy family. You have crazy relatives. Your daddy was an alcoholic. I begin to tell myself all the things I went through. I said, Lord, Kelly, you're doing pretty good, girl. I'm not boasting, I'm not bragging, but you know what I'm celebrating? God helping me. Victory, victory. Because there's some people in my family that are doing some crazy things. Some people in my family saying some crazy things. There's some all people in my family. It could have been me. The song says, it could have been me. Right. We'll say, out there, no clothes, no home, whatever. Well, it could have been me locked up in the mental institution. Right. Man. But it's not. You know why? Because I've allowed God to help me. I'm asking God to continue to help this body. So guess what? I'm going to continue to celebrate every single day that I have success. Amen. So you always do what you always done. You always get what you always got. That's right. If nothing changes, nothing changes, oh, brother. That's right. And so it's okay. God has planted you in a place where you can celebrate some success. I told Jazz and Jerry, I'm so proud of y'all for y'all money situation. They have saved, they've done right, they had an accountability partner. Look where God has brought them from. You know what I tell them? Don't stop now. No, that's right. Continue to celebrate by continuing to do the same thing. Because the last thing I want to see is for you to regress. Keep on going, y'all. Keep on going. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. yes. Okay. I'm proud of y'all. <laughs> so 2015, if we plan for it, it can be a year of change. It's going to be. God wants so much for us. This is not a beat down. God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be successful. He's equipped you with everything that you need. We just have to believe it, think it, and act it. Yeah. It's simple. There's no one in here any better than anybody else. Amen. There are some of us in here that are more diligent, more faithful, and guess what? We're seeing the results of it. So if you want to be like Pastor Ash, start thinking like Pastor Ash and acting like Pastor Ash. Hmm. Really? So that's all I have. 2015 is going to be a great year. I have determined it's going to be a great year. I'm making some changes. 
I mean, y'all gonna be sick of me in 2016 if I'm still talking about all my diabetical problems. I'm gonna be sick of me too. <laughs> Amen. Right, I'm gonna be sick. Yeah. Any questions, comments? That's all I have. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Mother? Yes. In my father's house are. Yes. Okay. They're already there. Right. I mean, mother, they might be, you know, yeah, I don't know. But all I know <coughs> is whether it's there, not there, it's going to be there when I get there. Amen. And it's going to be awesome or yeah. awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'll agree to that. <laughs> Any announcements this Sunday? We have this Saturday, Brotherhood at 6 o'clock.